I split 100 players between three middle-aged civilizations, the Romans, the Mongolians, and the Barbarians, each with their own custom strengths and weaknesses to see how each civilization adapts to their environment. To properly simulate these times, all dinosaurs will be banned. However, horses, bears, lions, and arctic elephants are all allowed. Will they make peace or will they wage war? This is 100 Players Simulate the Middle Ages in Ark Survival Evolved. First up, we have the Mongolian civilization. After spawning in, most of them gathered around a fire to fight off the freezing conditions of the snow. However, some ventured out and began farming for resources such as wood and stone. Later on, they decided to meet up on top of a mountain that had great defense points as they planned on building a mighty base. Our second civilization is the Romans. These guys spawned in the chalk hills, but they were getting killed by mountain lions one after one. Anyone in the open would be killed. A small group of players managed to set up camp with thatch foundations and walls. Using this, they had a bit of safety. A few of the Romans managed to tame some horses, and just as another line ran into camp, the Romans grouped up, and by using the horses, they were able to kill this line. By harvesting the mountain lion's hide, the Romans were able to make clothing, which would protect them from the elements, as well as being the first civilization to set up an irrigation pipeline. Also, building had started construction on the Roman space. We now go to our third and last civilization, the Barbarians. This group had set up their camp in a small cave, and this was only temporarily, as they decided to go on boats, as that was their custom speciality. The Barbarians had also started smelting some metal. This meant they could craft better and better metal tools to survive. Now we head back to the Mongolian civilization, and progress was going really good. These guys' custom strength was unlimited number of horses, and so their best players went out and began taming as many as physically possible. The Mongolians would use these horses to advance and retreat very quickly in battle. And it seemed the Mongolians' time to battle was near. A group of arctic elephants walked up to the base, but the Mongolians were really strong and they had players outside on horses with bows that began shooting these arctic elephants. Teamed up with the players up top, they managed to kill the entire group of elephants. By harvesting the remains of these elephants, the Mongolians managed to get loads of hide and loads of fur, meaning they could make fur armor to stay warm. But just as peace was established, a group of wolves circled the Mongolians and tore apart two horses and one player, killing all three of them. The Mongolians managed to kill some of the wolves, however, they had no other option than to retreat back up to the base. There was only one wolf remaining, but the soldiers inside were very low, so backup had arrived. The Mongols up top had also started using bows to kill this wolf, and victory was re-established. Back over to the Barbarian Civilization. They had moved out of their cave base and instead settled on the shore, where resource collection and boat construction had started. The Barbarians were actually a really well-organized team, but as they keep moving from settlement to settlement, they didn't have the best technologies. Also, their boats were looking slightly debatable, but anyway. Back over at the Roman civilization, resources were being collected. This was so their main builder Ace had the means to build a huge circular castle base, which he had planned previous to this event. The Romans also had a huge metal smelting rig which they used to make better and better tools. The Romans had also tamed a small group of horses, but one of their players found something incredible. It's Cool of Dragons, an MMO fancy conquest game developed by the creators of Rise of Kingdoms. Dive into a realm where legends come to life, where you become the hero of your own destiny. Call of Dragons gives boundless exploration in a fantasy realm. Recruit diverse heroes like elven maidens, orcs, and forest mages, and embark on quests to extraordinary locations like the Firefly Tree and Frozen Spires. Unite with allies, conquer behemoths, and expand your domain. In Call of Dragons, you can conquer monstrous behemoths in the wilderness. As you enter the behemoth lair, it becomes a fight for survival, where teamwork is crucial. Each member of your team will need to use their unique abilities effectively. Deploy fearless melee warriors, mounted cavalry for devastating charges, expert marksmen for ranged attacks, and powerful magic units to control the chaos. But remember, the battlefield is unforgiving and always changing, requiring perfect harmony among your team to conquer the relentless challenges and achieve triumph. To dominate the ruthless battlefield, you need to brace yourself for thrilling guild versus environment battles against various behemoth types, just like the Behemoth Dragon. Are you prepared to rise to the savage challenge? 
master the art of survival as the Beastmaster. In the harsh, unforgiving wilderness, as an appointed, skilled Beastmaster, you hold the key to survival. Harness your razor-sharp reflexes and expert handling of Behemoths to secure dominance in the untamed landscape. Unleash untamed devastation by choosing the perfect creature and summoning it onto the battlefield. The smartest thing you can do right now is to pause the video and download Call of Dragons using my link below or even scanning the QR code. You can become a Beastmaster today. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you can use the special code CODMONSTER to get special rewards in game, including limited monsters and mythical magic. Back over to the Mongolian civilization, progress was looking great. They constructed some large defensive wooden walls littered with spikes everywhere. Their main base was built out of stone and they followed a wall after wall design. In the courtyard of the base, their builder had made some Mongolian wooden huts. These huts would provide the housing for all of these Mongolian members, and inside there were fireplaces for all of the members to cook food that they needed to survive. The Romans also were doing really well. One of their members had crafted an entire Roman flag, which was absolutely amazing. They'd also got some steady progress going with the metal. Back over at the Barbarian Civilization, their boats were looking beyond strong. The entire boats were made fully out of stone. They had also elected a leader, General Big Frank, and his aim was to get as many ballista and catapult turrets on these boats as physically possible. The Mongolians, on the other hand, had a duty way past any of the other teams. Their leader, Albert, had ordered for all of the members to get a haircut. Now, this haircut was not a choice. All the members had to do it, otherwise they would be executed. And so, every Mongolian man lined up to get a haircut. Albert insisted that in future, if they were to raid any single person, they must all look the part and look absolutely splendid. However, in the time that Albert and his Mongolians were wasting time, the Romans had constructed an entire fortress. And this thing, made completely out of stone, was looking amazing. And their elected president, Donald Trump, was taking charge. However, as all was going well, it seemed a traitor was at the Roman base. This traitor had tried screwing over the Romans by killing some of the members. Then he claimed he was from the Mongolian team. In reality, this traitor wasn't from the Mongolian team. He was from the Romans. He was just trying to do them dirty. But Donald Trump and the Roman civilization didn't know he was lying. And so they started to get angry about Mongolians being on this map. The Romans planned on invading the Mongolian civilization at any point they could. If any of them could find the base location, Donald would send the army and they would attack the Mongolians. But before they did that, they wanted to get a little bit of revenge. As Donald thought this traitor was from the Mongolian team, he ordered for him to be killed. This traitor, after being pierced with a spear, was taken by the death penalty. The Roman civilization did not look like they were going to give in any time soon to any other tribe. Back over at the Mongolian civilization, tensions were rising high. They wanted to go out and attack another civilization immediately, as their players were getting restless. And so Albert ordered a speech to be held up on his throne. After all players were gathered, Albert announced that he wanted to leave this base on these horses and go and search the land for any other of the civilizations. He said first that they would search the water, as they believed barbarians would have boats. Albert was exactly correct, and now this civilization was on the way to the barbarians. Now the Mongolians were leaving the base, heading straight for the Barbarians' oceans, where they would most likely be found. Because the Mongolians' speciality was horses and flame arrows with bows, the Barbarians on foot would have no chance of taking down these Mongolians. The Barbarians would need to get their act together quickly, and craft a jar of pitch and catapult turrets to survive the attack. But just as the Barbarians needed peace to upgrade their boats, it seemed wolves had started attacking their members. All of the Barbarian members panicked and tried getting into the water, however, some of them were still killed by the wolves. The Barbarian's elite force brought these wolves into the water and managed to kill most of them. But there was still one high-level wolf remaining on the land, and so the elite force of Barbarians brought them over to this rock and managed to knock it out by using clubs and swords. 
Even though they're now safe, this wasn't good for these barbarians in the slightest, as loads of their members had died. The Mongolians on their horses were travelling fast, and they had reached the land of the barbarians. They had crossed the border between the snow and the barbarian territory, and they were heading for the river, as that's where they thought the barbarians would be. But instead, all of the barbarian members had gone on their one SS destroyer boat to circle the perimeter. Now the barbarians had no idea that the Mongolians were here, but they just at the right time left the base. Because the Mongolians found all of their boats and their building on land. As there was no barbarians at the base, these Mongolians went straight in with their horses and just started destroying everything. The Mongolians were just finishing their looting spree and they began crossing the water. But just at the wrong time, the barbarians wandered in in their SS destroyer boat. One of the barb members managed to land a ballista on the horse of the Mongolians, and then all the fighting began. They started shooting catapults, their speciality jar of pitch, and also ballistas. Now these jar of pitch would cause explosions, killing many of the Mongolian members. It was like a grenade but filled with oil, and this caused the Mongolians to light up in flames. As many of the Mongolian members had serious casualties, the leader Albert ordered for them to retreat and try and waste the ammo of the barbarians. Some members ran in with horses and ran out, trying to waste more and more of the Barbarian Jar of Pitch ammo. It was actually working pretty effectively, and the Barbarians ended up wasting about 7 Jars of Pitch without any more new kills. But when the Barbarian leader, King Frank, realised it wasn't effective, he ordered them to move out into the open sea. Back over at the Roman civilization, a bear was lurking nearby. Now everyone knows in the Middle Ages you can't tame a bear, meaning you can't tame it in this simulation. But, the Romans had a great idea. What if they could get the bear to aggro on them, follow them into a trap that their builders make? Then, when any other team attacks their base, the Romans will unleash the gates and let the bear go straight out back into the open, where it would rip apart any invading players or horses. As the Mongolians have horses, they can travel around the map very quickly, and so they went to the Chalk Hills after fighting some barbarians. In the Chalk Hills, the Mongolians grouped up and they organised a plan to search these Chalk Hills and find the Roman base. One of their players managed to stumble across this Roman base and he informed everyone else on the location. But these Mongolians didn't know what they were up against. The Roman base was one of the biggest bases built on any event we've had. The Romans had built archer podiums within their walls on the top of their base, and so if any Mongolians invaded, they could get speared down by Romans. This was a very strong team and it'd be very difficult for the Mongolians only with hand gear to get inside this base. Plus, the Romans had the bear ready at any moment to be unleashed for the Mongolians who were attacking. The Mongolians arrived and began galloping towards the Romans base. Now this Roman Empire however, had no idea whatsoever these Mongolians were here. Only until about 30 seconds in the attack, they realised there was about 15 Mongolians outside the base. The Romans weren't too sure on what they should even do, but one of their members managed to get on top of the bear and he was ready to release at any moment. He didn't want to release too early because he thought the Mongolians were just out on the bear with the horses, so he was waiting for some of them to get on foot. But the Mongolians were adamant on staying on their horses so they could move quickly in and out to escape these Roman spears. One of the Roman members managed to get lassoed by the Mongolians off of the base. Unfortunately, this player was left all by himself, and he was running for his life. But because the Mongolians had the advantage of speed, they managed to catch up to this Roman player as fast as possible, and end his life. However, as the Romans were now in a position of defeat and the Mongolians were feeling victorious, the Romans released the bear. Now this thing was way too big, way too powerful, and way too high level for any of these horses to kill. But, one of the Mongolians had a really good idea. He got the bear aggroed on him, he started running, risking his life. He ran away from the Romans' base, leading this bear behind him, hoping to get it away from the rest of the Mongolian members. This fellow brave man was successful, and the bear was led away from the Roman base, and the Mongolians were safe. The Mongolian members then began lining up at the front of the Romans' base and breaking down the door with axes. Because of the way the Romans were positioned on top of the base, they had no way to shoot these Mongolians who were breaking the door, meaning the Mongolians had no threat until the door was broken. When they did breach, one arrow was shot at a Roman, and he closed the secondary door. Now the Mongolians were inside the Romans' base, 
but one of the Roman members managed to get behind the Mongolians, build another gate, and now the Mongolians were trapped inside the base. There was no escape for these Mongolians, and they faced many casualties because they were completely trapped inside. However, there were a few members outside of the Roman's base who began breaking their way into this airlocked area, and then the Mongolians inside the airlock began breaking their way out. The Romans kept closing and opening the inside gate, shooting at the Mongolians each time. The Mongolians outside the base, however, were completely resilient, and they eventually broke down this gate, and the Mongolians got on their horses and ran straight back to their base. As the Romans rebuilt and the Mongolians were heading back to their base, General Big Frank and the very intelligent barbarians were on their way to the Romans' base. The Romans had actually invited the barbarians over to their base for an alliance. And so, the barbarians went straight inside and the Romans just asked for them to wait there, as their leader, Donald Trump, was getting ready. While the barbarians were drawing inappropriate tattoos on each other, they were getting stared at with a ballista turret by the Romans. Donald Trump then ordered for the barbarians to be allowed inside the king's area, and so, the debate between General Big Frank and Donald Trump began. First, they both started talking about what they would do if they were in an alliance together. It seemed though, Donald really wasn't sure on this, and he decided to do something bold and completely out of the ordinary that Frank would have never expected. As Frank and Donald were debating, one of the members struck one of the Romans, and so the Romans went crazy. They started killing loads and loads of barbarian members. Barbarians were falling like flies. However, Frank ordered all of them to stop fighting. He was screaming at both teams, telling them to stop fighting. And so Donald agreed. But just as Donald was standing inside the battlefield, he walked over to where Frank was. Donald wanted to get behind Frank and end his life personally. And so Donald slashed Frank with his sword and Frank was getting very low on health. And then Frank ended up getting cornered in the base where two of Donald's soldiers ended his life. And this was the end of the barbarian civilization. It was only the Romans and Mongolians remaining. And so Donald Trump ordered for the Romans to head straight for the Mongolians base. Using the power of editing, the Romans had arrived. Now because the Romans had killed these barbarians, the Romans now had control over Jar of Pitch, the special item of the barbarians. And so, as the Mongolians believed they were the only team to have long-range weapons, the Romans fired Jar of Pitch. The Mongolian soldiers began screaming, and Albert ordered for all of them to get out of the area immediately, as all of the wood structures were burning down to pieces. The Mongolians had no chance with their wood structures against this Jar of Pitch. However, the Romans knew it was limited, and they began firing in selective places, trying to burn down the most useful areas of the Mongolians' base. Even though nearly 30% of the Mongolians' base were being burnt down to bits, the Mongolians stood strong. They had many, many bows and arrows, and they would use this to go from range and try and kill the Romans. These Mongolian archers were lined up, and they were ready for any invading Romans to be shot dead. As the Mongolians, however, were fighting all the other Romans, one single Roman player named Wes managed to get into the courtyard of the Mongolian base, get his bow which he got from a Mongolian member, and shoot the Mongolian archers. This man managed to kill one of the Mongolian members who is in a safe area of the base. This gave the Romans the little bit of confidence they needed to go and attack the main entrance of the Mongol base. As the Mongolians were distracted by the death they had just had, the Romans had advanced straight into the main entrance when the gate was left open by a Mongolian member. It was now Mongolians versus Romans. The Romans had strong swords, but the Mongolians were using whips to take these swords away from the Romans and get it themselves. This meant the Mongolians had complete control over the entire Roman army, as the Romans had no weapons at all. As the Roman soldiers were completely defenseless, they began running for their lives, trying to escape the mob of Mongolians. One of the Mongolian members managed to shoot a flame arrow into one of the Romans, meaning he burnt to death, and the last remaining player was killed with a sword by Albert himself. This meant the Mongolian civilization has won the event. If you would ever like to play in these events, join the Discord in the description, and also make sure to download Call of Dragons while you're at it. Use my link or the QR code.